Today I'm going to be talking about the Saturn V rocket and the lack of testing that was done. Today I'm going to be talking specifically about Apollos 4, 6, 8, 9, 10, and 11. Now Apollo 4 was the first test of an all-up Saturn V. So that's an all-up test. So that included all the parts that are never being tested together before it was done with Apollo 4. Now this was an all-man launch. This mission apparently went perfectly, according to NASA. The second unmanned test of the Saturn V was with Apollo 6. This mission was plagued with problems that NASA does admit to. Now NASA says the problem with Apollo 6 was pogo oscillations. And because of the pogo oscillations, the engines in the second stage, the J2 engines, were disrupted, so they had multiple failures. I believe they had two failures, actually one failure, and then the computer for some reason shut down the second engine. And NASA said this was caused by disruption in the fuel lines brought on by pogo oscillations. Now what pogo oscillations is, is instability along the longitudinal axis of the Saturn V. This, NASA says, caused the problems. But when you look at this a little further, you notice that NASA never says anything about the F1 engines. It never says that they were disrupted by any fuel lines breaking, but interesting enough, it did affect the second stage engines and the third stage engine. So when you look further at this, you find out that actually it most likely was the F1 engines, and in fact it was the F1 engines, not most likely, it actually was a problem with the F1 engines. Now to explain, the F1 engines are needed for an Apollo landing. And the reason being is the F1 engines were supposed to be the most powerful engine, rocket engine, ever produced. Each engine would produce a thrust of 1.5 million pounds. There were five of these engines in the first days of the Saturn V for a total of 7.5 million pounds. Without 7.5 million pounds, you cannot launch an Apollo payload into low Earth orbit for an eventual trip to the moon. So therefore you have no Apollo landings. If the F1 engine is not working perfectly, you have no Apollo moon landings. The problem that NASA does admit to actually, that they have constant problems with the F1 engines, is the area of the combustion chamber. NASA says that there was instability in the combustion chamber. Now, just to briefly explain uh, a description of what I'm talking about here, when you look at a rocket, we all see the nozzle of the rocket engine on the bottom. On top of the nozzle is an area called the throat. On top of that is the combustion chamber. Now, and of course, on top of the combustion chamber, you have the rest of the engine that mixes the propellant and then sends it through to the combustion chamber for a controlled explosion. That controlled explosion is pushed through the throat and then out through the nozzle, which propels the rocket up. NASA had to find a way, though, to cool the temperatures of the combustion chamber, which could reach up to 6,000 degrees Fahrenheit. So they came out with a method called the regenerative cooling system. And this uh, was used in liquid fueled rockets, which the F1 engine was. Now what that is, is, is hundreds of small tubes that run outside of the combustion chamber, the throat area, and part way down the nozzle. And propellant would be pushed through these hundreds of thin, very thin tubes. And the propellant would absorb the thermal energy produced by the controlled explosion within the combustion chamber. And then that propellant would be directed into the combustion chamber which is supposed to have made it for a more fuel efficient or more efficient engine. However, there's where the instability is. The tubes were breaking down. And because they were breaking down, they were not absorbing enough thermal energy to keep those temperatures down. So it was creating instability within the combustion chamber. So in order to overcome that, NASA had to find a way in other words, the only way they could do it was to use the F1 engines at lesser thrust. So if they were using less thrust, they weren't producing the power necessary, which defeats the whole purpose of using the F1 engines in the first place. 
This is apparent when you analyze Apollo 6. It was burning kerosene, which is very interesting, because the Echo engines were the only engines in the Saturn V rocket that actually used kerosene, along with liquid oxygen. Now, NASA says that they solved all these problems in just seven months leading up to the next launch of a Saturn V, Apollo 8. Now, here's where it gets interesting. Apollo 8 was the third launch of the Saturn V, but it was also the first manned mission of a Saturn V. So they sent the first manned mission of a Saturn V with only two all-manned tests of the Saturn V and its F1 engines. That is total of 19 hours for the Saturn V rocket and a total of four minutes for the F1 engines. Look to aviation. You try to do something like that in aviation, you would be laughed out of the room. In aviation, even with today's sophisticated technology, by comparison to 50 years ago, and software uh, techniques that are used to design these aircraft, you still, they still do hundreds of hours of testing on the engines of these aircraft and on the airframes of these aircraft before these planes are certified for commercial use. But not so with NASA. NASA said that with only two unmanned launches of the Saturn V, for a total of 19 hours and a total of four minutes with the F-1 engines, in which one of these unmanned launches, Apollo 6, was plagued with problems, that they solved all those problems in just seven months without any further testing the actual conditions of flight to send the first manned mission on Apollo 8. And NASA claims that it worked perfectly. Now, I might add that Apollo 8 was not only the first manned mission of the Saturn V, it was the first manned mission to leave low Earth orbit and circumnavigate the moon, according to NASA. Now, you can factor in Apollo's nine 10 leading up to Apollo 11 say well there was two more rocket launches but when you total up the total time of these F1 engines they had about 10 minutes of flight testing total before Apollo 11 no way absolutely no way and this is for me one of the biggest indicators that these missions were faked you have a total, up to Apollo 11, you have a total of the F1 engines with 10 minutes of flight in actual conditions. Unbelievable. 